What's going on, everybody? It's been a long time since I've done this, and I think that right now is the best time to be able to do this. To talk about mental health, and I understand everyone's been struggling with that lately. You know, we all have our own stories. We all have our own, you know, issues and 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 problems we're going through, um, and not a whole lot of outlets to be able to talk about it. Um, being in this day and age in this world, it is tough. It is just astronomically tough because we have those who just want to forget their pain and just act like it doesn't matter. And then we have those who are going through some kind of pain every day and they just, they lash out because they just don't know how to put it into words. Like, Take me, for instance, I don't know how to put my feelings into words anymore. I, I don't think that I ever really knew how because when I was growing up as a kid, like my mom was an amazing mom. I don't, I, I don't trash my mother ever because my mom, you know, she's a saint. But I don't think growing up in the time period that I did, we didn't teach our younger generations on how to to talk about our feelings, to talk about what is wrong to talk about, you know, what's going on in our heads. Because a lot of people are like, oh, they're kids. They'll be just fine. It's like, no, a lot of those kids dealt with trauma that they could not talk about. And they didn't know how. And now we're dealing with a lot of issues as they grow older, you know. Like, generations ago, it was so different, 100% different. That if you had, a, if you had, like, you know, if you if you were feeling any kind of pain, you were told to keep it in and be strong. And it's like, sometimes I don't wanna be strong. Sometimes I want, I. there are days I just, I just wanna break down and cry. And I do, but by myself. Just like I know many of you out there are struggling doing the same thing, whether you're a man or a woman or, or you know, whoever you are. You are dealing with your own issues. Everyone's got their own. Not one person is going to be perfect. And know that. But just know that you need to be true to yourself. Stop lying to protect your own feelings. Stop lying to protect, you know, your, your pride. Let go of the pride. I've been told on many occasions to let go of my pride because my pride is what puts me in bad situations or rough situations. Pride will only get you in trouble. I wouldn't normally open up and talk about it, but my pride has put me in situations to the point where I have let my family down in my life. Dropping out of school when I was 18, that was because of pride. That was because I never thought that I was gonna amount to anything. And I was depressed. And I said, you know what? School's not for me. So I then drop out. And I'm still working because I had a job at the time. But then a month later, I lose that job because of my own pride and stupidity. And then for about four or five months I sat there and I drank and I smoked and I was just so down and out. I didn't know where to go and I didn't know what to do. My mom and I were living together still at home because my sister was already moved out. and My stepfather was already gone. You know, he had already moved to his home country and uh, and I just remember thinking to myself, I'm like, is this what my life is going to be? And so I kicked myself in the keister and said, you know what? Stop dwelling in your pity. You know, just, yeah, you dropped out of high school. There are a lot of people who do. Yeah, you lost your first job, Jesse. A lot of people do. You never keep your first job. Unless that is your ultimately like first career and only career, that's on a rare occasion where that happens. So I then find myself getting 
another, uh, uh, you know, my next job. It was my first factory job. Made nine fifty an hour, 40 hours a week, which was amazing. It was perfect for me at the time. I was 18. I didn't have a lot of bills. I was paying my own phone bill and I was paying my mom. Uh, you know, once I started getting paychecks, I was paying my mom about 200 to $300 a month. Um, I think I think the most it got to was about seventy five dollars a week, or yeah, between fifty and seventy five dollars a week, because I got paid every week and it was great, and everything was going great up until I got a phone call from a staffing agency saying we no longer need you. Even though I was doing so great at work, I was there every day, never called in. Never left home. Well, maybe I went home early once or twice, but it's because I was dealing with stuff at home or I was sick. Come to find out it was a supervisor that didn't like me. He, because I was a temp temporary employee, that all they got to do is just tell, tell the staffing agency, go ahead and fire this guy. And so they let me go. And they said they would fight to find another job for me because it's a temp agency and that's what they do. They never did. And so then I was stuck again. But this time it was worse. My mother kicked me out. I was 19 at the time, just turned. I had no money. I didn't have a job. I didn't have a car or license. I was so down that I thought I was gonna end up going down a road that would lead me nowhere and possibly even six feet under. And then a bright light came through. My aunt and uncle and a couple of my cousins, they let me stay with them. They opened up their arms and told me that I could stay with them. And I, and I did. Um, actually later that day, you know, after my mom, like me and her got into a big fight and she kicked me out. <clears throat> it actually was that same afternoon that I boxed up my stuff, which was two medium sized boxes filled with stuff. I had some clothes, some shoes, and that was it. And then um, my cousin picked me up because he had a car. And I uh, ended up doing that for a while. And they, they helped me. They helped me big time. Um, they threw job offers at me left and right saying, here, I think you should try this out. And I did. I tried several jobs out and nothing ever really stuck. Um, then my uncle, he is a great guy, you know, he, he's very filled with good heart, <clears throat> filled with good heart. He put in a good word for a referral to the job he was at and job he's still currently at, which was, a uh, Chrysler, which is a, um, assembly plant for Jeeps and Chrysler made products or made cars really. And... I put my name in and um, it was basically like a lottery system where they were picking names out left and right for when they wanted to do a big surge of hiring. So pretty much at that point I had to wait and I ended up waiting over an entire year. Actually it was about a year and a half until they finally gave me a phone call and said, Hey, we picked your name. We'll go ahead and send you a link to be able to put in an application. <clears throat> and it was wonderful because at the time I was going from job to job to job and there was one good job that stuck. It was like one for almost an entire year. It was great. It was actually a wonderful job, but I ended up finding something different that I quit that job for. And then the job that I quit my other job for ended up getting rid of me. So it was just a lot of bad luck. Um, but up until then, I, you know, I was just dealing with so much depression still. And then I got that job. I still didn't start until May of the next year. So the timeline was February of 2014 all the way to May of 2016. So well over two years.
I had to wait to initially start this job. But I ended up working there for about four years up until COVID hit. And then that messed everything up. So then that spiraled me into a deep, dark depression again, where I'm lashing out at people I love and I'm, I'm, I'm so into myself and I'm, I haven't, I actually come to find that I've never, I haven't touched any alcohol or anything like that, which is what I used to do. But now I don't, I haven't touched alcohol since this past winter because I don't need it. It only made things worse when I did drink. And um, yeah, so right now I'm dealing with my own depression because I'm in a situation where I'm stuck. Um, I constantly keep having these feelings of guilt because my fiance and I, we lived together. We were supposed to share bills, but I felt less of a man because I have been back and forth between jobs this past year and now the unstableness is coming back and I don't know where to deal with my problems and I don't know where to deal with my anger and my stress. I don't know where. A lot of people say, oh, you know, just, just, you know, <laughs> take it out on a punching bag. And it's like, that's not the answer to my issues. The answer to my issues is I need to, well, I'm glad I get it. You know, I've got a job now, which is great. I still don't start until next week. So, so I still don't get a paycheck for another two weeks or something like that after that. So it's, it, it's, it's not solving my current issues. And I guess the one biggest thing that I've had is like my computer. I get to play video games that, that helps. Um, I've got my car still, which is a blessing so I can take drives I can go to the grocery store, which is therapeutic. I know it's gonna sound weird to all you guys, but it is therapeutic to go to the grocery store and get stuff. I don't know why. Cleaning, cleaning the house has been my biggest thing. My house isn't probably the cleanest. It's probably messy. Well, there you go. There's your messy Jesse right there. But I, I still, it's therapeutic to clean. A lot of people are like, wow, cleaning, oh, it's so much work. It's actually really not. When you try to break it down room by room, like you go from the kitchen to the living room to both bathrooms to your bedroom and then to, you know, your stepkid's room. And it's like, actually, that can be left to him since he's a 10-year-old now. He's fine. He can clean that. <laughs> he can clean that. Uh, he's 10. I, I, But I, I, I think the biggest thing for me is being able to have a positive outlet to be able to talk, to vent about what I'm going through. And for others as well, I don't think that a lot of people realize that they can vent, but there's hardly any outlets. Positive outlets where people will listen, stop giving constructive criticism, stop giving their two cents. I don't care who you are. If you are the type of person that loves to give your two cents about how what someone else is going through, then, then then, you shouldn't even be allowed to do any of that because some people are not looking for your expertise and what you go through. Some people just want a person to listen. It's what I have to tell people. It's what people actually have to tell me. Sometimes I am that person and I got to stop because I don't want to be. I want to be, I, I'm the person that will open up my ears and that will give you my full attention. So like, I won't be on my phone. My phone will be several feet away from me. I'm not even paying attention to it. If you need someone to just listen to you, I'm that type of person. So the, the, the moral of this video is I want people to understand that they're not alone and that they should understand too, don't bottle up the emotions. I know it's easier said than done, and I know I'm preaching to the choir, but I beg you don't, I promise you. It's not worth it, it's not healthy, it's not good for your sanity and for your life and for people around you as well. Because it's not just about you, it's also about how 
you feel affects other people. So remember, you taking the, the necessary strides and the steps to become more of a healthy, mental healthy person, do it the right way. Don't do it the wrong way. And that goes for me too. That goes, I gotta start taking that advice too. Because when you start lashing out at people that you love and care about you, you're gonna drive them away. They're not gonna, they're not gonna wanna be around you. They're not gonna feel safe or comfortable. So please, if you need someone to talk to, whether you're just having a bad day or whether you're having a bad year, or whether you're just upset about your favorite sports team or upset that someone got kicked off of the voice or something. I don't know. It doesn't matter, big or small. You can trust in the people around you or you can trust in someone like me. So I can give you guys more stories and more talks about everything. I can sit there and and tell you that everything will be okay. Or I, no, I can sit here and tell you everything's going to be okay. Which in, in, in reality, to think positively, yes, it will be okay. But we're not okay right now. And so, and that's okay to not be okay. That is totally okay to not be okay. I think a lot of people tend to forget that it's okay to not be okay. And I know you're saying, Jesse, but you know, I, I have to put up this front for my kids or I have to put up this front for my husband or my wife, my, 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 my family, my coworkers, my boss. I, I have to do it. Otherwise people won't see me as a strong human being. It's like, no, people will see you as strong by going through it and, and realizing that we're all the same kind of person. We all have a body. We all have a physical body. We all have brains up here, minds that process information. We all have feelings. We all have a soul. We all, all have a heart. Remember that. We all have eyes, ear. Well, yes, I can say that. So just, just understand it's okay to not be okay. And that is going to be the title of today's episode and today's talk. It is okay to not be okay. You're not alone. Whatever you're going through, like I said, big or small, you're not alone. And it's not stupid either. I feel like mental health has been so much better over the last several years. Like a lot of people are starting to become more understanding and starting to become more thoughtful and starting to realize okay well someone's just having this person's just having a bad day and maybe they just need someone to talk to some you know to wind down a little bit to process your your day to, to process all the information so i hope you guys enjoyed this video please let me know down in the comments uh like you know what kind of content would you like to see further would you like me to keep going with this? Because I, I actually do really want to um, start being more open about mental health. We all should be. Um, let me know also down in the comments, um, you know, if, you know, your stories, if you're feeling um, okay to talk about a certain thing that, that's going on in your life. I'm sure we all would listen and would be understanding. Um, also, make sure to subscribe and hit that golden bell to let you know every time I post. It really does help. I promise you guys. Um, really trying to hit goals. <laughs> really trying to hit 1,000 subscribers on here. We're so close. We're at 69 subscribers. And to be honest, I never thought that I'd be able to say that we've, we've gone far. So to the community and beyond, have a wonderful day. Stay happy. Stay humble. And remember, it's okay to not be okay. So long, guys.